Okay, this was a case that was sent in uh, just to look at some strategies on how to design a Maryland bridge a little bit easier. Uh, this is a uh, tooth number six uh, to eight, uh, replacing tooth number seven. And the dentist said that uh, she had numerous occasions where she was having trouble with the wings breaking during milling, and when she actually got the wings to mill, uh, they were binding and pretty difficult to seat. So looking at the mill phase, this is how I got the case. You know, you, you've got a number of different issues here. Uh, you can see this wing is pretty thin in that connector. Uh, we've got some minimal thickness issues over here on the wing on uh, tooth number uh, six. And uh, also, if I turn on uh, the display options, the upper jaw, and look underneath, I've got some definite binding issues here uh, that are outside the actual areas of the connector. Uh, so you, you've got a couple different issues, and I'm sure you're, you've got some binding over here where the sprue is at. So these are different things we need to get, a, uh, get around to make this work. Uh, I know that this tooth is unprepped on tooth number six, so if you were doing that, to eat, an easy way to get this to fit would be to simply just to slice this wing a little bit shorter. You remove the binding area, and you still have got a nice fitting wing. Uh, but let's go ahead and just start from scratch, and we'll go ahead and look at what uh, was done here and how to improve it. So we'll go back to the model phase, and here is uh, the the model. Very nice model, very good images. Now, if we went back to administration, uh, I will tell you that the idea behind this was they were going to do two wings on both tooth number six and tooth number eight. Those were going to be veneers and biogeneric, and the pontic was going to be done in biogeneric copy. Now, I can tell you that uh, looking at the contralateral lateral, uh, contralateral tooth, the lateral incisor on tooth number ten. My guess is it's going to be very difficult if, if this is symmetrical to make a wing out of tooth number seven. So let's go ahead and look at display objects. Let's put up the biocopy. And now you can see exactly what I mean. If we're going to copy this exactly, you can see that we have very little room uh, to make a wing from the distal of tooth number seven into the mesial of tooth number six. This is a big step. So this is the area, my guess, is where that wing was probably fracturing. Uh, so if we have room, you may not have room here, so let's go ahead and look at the lower jaw, uh, but we do. So my first bit of advice here is let's not do biocopy. Uh, you could make this work by, by going through all sorts of trouble and extending this out, but my guess is you can get a, a pretty aesthetic result by just doing straight biogeneric. So let's start with that. Let's go to administration. We're going to go ahead and just delete the restoration together, or all together. We'll do bridge, veneer, biogeneric individual, tooth number six, tooth number eight. We're going to do pontic, biogeneric individual, tooth number seven. I'm just going to start out with uh, intersection connectors. Our material, uh, it could be any material, but let's just say we want to do Emacs. We'll hit OK. And let's go back to the model. Now before I move forward with actually doing the margination, uh, let's go back and look at the uh, model axis. Now I, it's, it's set pretty well. Uh, the, the thing that I, I look at, I don't much look at this big right side very often. I usually will look at this left. I like to make the midline of the central incisors perpendicular to that black line, which it's clearly not here. It's a little bit of a cant. So we're going to keep this model the same. I'm going to move this up and we're just going to rotate this model so the midline of the central incisors is perpendicular to that black line. Okay, it really didn't change a whole lot here, but it sets the occlusal plane a little bit better. Now, if I can look at this bottom one, what we're looking here is just the angulation or inclination of the central incisor. I might want to change that just a touch uh, to get a, a nice uh, inclination there. When we're done with that, we can go ahead and just simply hit OK and move on to margination. Now what I like to do, uh, you have to know where to marginate, so I'll go to the bottom of the screen. It wants us to start with tooth number six, so we'll go ahead and I tend to initially draw my margins without actually rotating this model. So I keep the model the same just so I have a, a reference point on where the insertion axis could be. And I just go ahead and draw a little wing. Now remember, this is an unprepped tooth, so we don't need to make a massive wing. 
we'll go to tooth number seven. Now when I'm drawing my pontics, I don't want to draw a margin line out like this. Okay? That seems like it would be good for the pontic, but it doesn't give me much room for the connectors. So what I'm going to do here is make it a little bit more to the lingual than you might normally do it. Okay? Now we'll go ahead and click on tooth number eight, and we'll draw tooth number eight. Okay, so now that I've got, got them drawn, now I'll go ahead and start moving the model around, checking things out, making any edits. Clearly I have to make an edit there. We're going to keep the pontic the way it is, just a little bit more pronounced. And maybe I'll go ahead and switch to number six to bring it a little bit more into the proximal surface. Okay, so that's where I'm going to start. The next thing I'm going to do is hit insertion axis. It's not too bad. I, I might switch it a little bit just to give me a little bit more axis of all my margins. We'll go ahead and hit OK. You want to make sure you check your parameters for both uh, the pontics and or the pontic and the two veneers and we'll go ahead and calculate our restoration. Okay, so by doing that you've got a much nicer proposal down here in the lingual. Uh, you can see the buckle looks reasonable. That's very easy to contour uh, when you get that out of the mouth. Now the last thing we're going to really have to deal with is the connectors here. So I like that. Uh, I think that that looks good. Uh, the emergence and the embrasures on the buckle. The lingual, that's definitely a thin wing. Let's go ahead and just take our anatomical shape tool Let's just shape out the whole entire lingual. Okay. We can certainly take the form plus tool. We can start form that in. And then once you do that, I might do the same for the connectors. We just click over here. I might even just take the circular shape tool and just start shaping it over a little. Just to really increase, you always can take that connector down afterwards if you're not happy with it. Same thing will go over here. Let's just bring that out a little bit. Shape the connector. Now if I want to check my connector, I mean notice if I put my display options in my lower jaw, I'm not really high here. You know, I've got room, so this is this is just no problem. So if I want to go ahead and uh, physically check what my connectors are at, that's no problem either. You just click in the middle. This one's at 15.27 millimeters. That connector will work perfectly. This one's at 6.7. That's fine for a Maryland bridge. That will work perfectly. The last thing we need to do is just check the binding. So we'll look inside. I definitely have some red, so I'm going to want to go ahead and uh, first just double click on that middle tooth to make sure we're working on the pontic. I usually just start with the, the smooth tool, start smoothing it out, just like you're forming a contact on a tooth. Okay? So if you like your contacts in yellow, make it yellow. Because remember, we're going into the adjacent tooth here. It's just like forming a contact. It should not be uh, affecting your connector one bit. Okay, so we'll stop it at that. Make sure we still have nice red there. I might actually add some red down here in this connector area. Okay. Turn this off. Can double check our connectors. We've got 11.61 there. Five, 6.56. That's pretty good. We'll go to the mill phase. We can check out the internal, and we should be ready to go. Okay, and here's the, the mill phase. Uh, looks very good. There's no binding. We always already know that. Nice clean wings, nice strong connectors. This should work very, very nicely. 
Do not let that sprue fool you. It would be wonderful if it would actually mill there. The odds of it milling actually on the Pontic are very, very low. It's most likely going to go on your wing. So be aware you might have to trim a little bit of your wing off. Uh, if I was doing this uh, normally, I might actually extend that wing over a little bit with my margin just to give me more room to actually um, move it. There's a couple other strategies that you can do, uh, which we'll go over in other videos on how to uh, remove the sprue. Or the other option, a very good option, is uh, we've always been in the habit of using two wings. Why not just use one wing? So on the central incisor, I may just make one big wing and not put one on the actual canine. Uh, it tends, the physics of it work a little bit better, so more and more of my stuff is now one wing instead of two. But that gives you a little idea on why this case went bad and how to fix it. The main reason is is, is sometimes when you, it's just not a good idea to do biocopy. It makes things a little bit worse when you're dealing with where the connectors need to be and uh, how strong the connectors need to be. So in this case, I think the, the correct choice would have been to do a biogeneric uh, Pontic.